Hello and welcome to Political Update on Ugo State Television. My name is Larry Mano. Today we'll be kicking off with this controversial bill that was rejected by the Senate. The Senate has rejected the controversial bill seeking to extend the service year for employees of National Assembly by additional five years. The bill, which had been passed at the House of Representatives, was declined for concurrence by the Senate at plenary. There were mixed reactions amongst lawmakers in the Senate after the Senate leader, Senator Bayemi Bamidele, introduced the bill for concurrence. While Senator Sumaila Kao spoke in support of the bill, others, including Senators Ainaya Abaribe and Ali Ndume, expressed reservations over the bill, saying that it will cause disaffection in the Nigerian civil service. Abaribe said it was against the passage of the bill because there was no difference between the staff of the National Assembly with special knowledge as the Director of Finance in Federal Ministry of Finance. Ndume and his parts reiterated the contentious nature of the bill and urged the lawmakers to be careful in processing it. The lawmaker urged their colleagues to repudiate the bill for further consultation. Senate President Goswil Pabio, after his ruling, declared that the bill was repudiated because it was controversial. And then the, about the governorship primaries in a dual state, Senator Monday of February has been declared winner of the All Progressive Congress governorship primaries in a dual state. Of February, pulled 12,433 votes to defeat 11 other aspirants who contested the rerun election, which was also initiated after the first contestant was declared inconclusive by the leadership of the ruling party. The senator was one of the three winners that emerged from the last Saturday's cancelled poll. And still in a dual state, Ashwa Godalo has emerged the winner of the People's Democratic Party primary election in a dual state. Godalo was elected at the delegate election of the party held at the Samo Stadium. But the deputy governor of a dual state, Philip Shaibu, held the parallel primary elsewhere and was declared parallel winner. The, the primary at the Samo Ogbemudia Stadium was more like a mere adoption of Igodalo, who was always backed by Governor Godwin Obaseki. Igodalo scored a total of 577 votes to beat his closest rival, Shaibo, who scored one vote, while other candidates scored zero votes. A total of 10 aspirants had contested for the ticket. Some of the aspirants, including Omorige Obedema and Omoside Ibinyedon, would do participation in the election. Other aspirants include Otto Esele, Aslim Ujezua, Omosede Ibinyedon, Osaro Onaiwu, Martins Umoribi, Adizet, Imuru, Felix Akubre, and Omerige Obedim Iema. Deputy Governorship candidate in Lagos State in the 2023 general election, Princess Islamiyat Oyefusi, has resigned a membership of the party. She confirmed her resignation in Lagos. She said she left the LP because the party's value no longer aligned with ours. Oyefusi, who is contested alongside LP governorship candidate, Mr. Badebo Rhodes Vivo, however, said our resignation from the party was not to join all progressive Congress, People's Democratic Party, or any other party. She said she did not have to join any political party to impact lives, adding that our focus at the moment was impacting lives across many communities in the state. 
And in Lagos State, the Lagos State House of Assembly has adopted the recommendations of the Committee on Local Government, Administration and Chief Tenshi Affairs and Rural Development to suspend Mr. Aziz Dawudu, a councillor in the Onibumbu Local Government Council Development Area. The resolution was part of the recommendations after yesterday's plenary presided over by the Deputy Speaker Miranda Mochisola. Committee Chairman Ganiu Okolaon, who read the recommendations, advised that councillors should have a harmonious working relationship with the chairman and council leaders. The resolution was part of recommendations at yesterday's plenary presided over by the Deputy Speaker Miranda Muchisola. Committee Chairman Ganiu Okolaon, who read the recommendations, advised that councillors should have a harmonious working relationship with the chairman and council leaders. It equally recommended scrapping of the office of the deputy majority leader, which was created by the council leader. According to it, there was no provision for such in the law guiding local government in the state. Furthermore, the committee recommended that priority should be given to the construction of a modern and befitting legislative chamber for the legislators in the council's 2024 budget and the clerk should always take directives from the leader of the council. The Nigerian Police Force, Zone 5, has released the national chairman of the Labour Party, Julius Abare. Abare and others were released in bail on Thursday. A, smoke press, a, smoke, uh, a spokesman for the police zone, Tijani Momo, said also, Labour Party national spokesman, Obiora Ifo, confirmed that the embattled national chairman who was arrested by policemen in Bini City, the Edo state capital, on Wednesday afternoon was released Thursday morning. The police had said Abare was direct, arrested for attempted murder, illegal possession of firearms and related offences. Momo had told newsmen that Abare and four others were arrested over a petition written against them by the petitioner whose name he did not mention. He said an allegation of attempted murder was levelled against Abare. The video clips recording of the petitioner being assaulted, being beaten, and he came home last year to conduct ward matters, Momo said. Right now, we'll be going on a short break, and when we come back, we're talking political and foreign scene. Thank you for staying with us on Political Update. And now on the foreign scene, Guinea's military junta has protest, protested Russia's ambassador after his embassy reportedly warned of possible unrest in the capital, Conakry. The warning was issued after junta leader Colonel Mamadi Domboya dissolved the government on Monday and ordered the closure of all borders. Ambassador Alexei Povov apologized to Junta for what he called a misunderstanding, Guinean media reported. Colonel Domboya took power, took power in a 2021 coup. He dissolved his government on Monday without offering any explanation. He also ordered the seizure of the passport of sacked ministers and the freezing of their bank account. Guinean media reported that Colonel Domboya's decision led to the Russian embassy in Guinea advising Russian nationals to be vigilant as there could be unrest in the West African state capital, Conakry. The junta has reacted angrily with an official in its foreign military summoning Mr. Povov to a meeting. And in Senegal, Senegal President Mark Sall has said he will stand down on 2nd April when his term is due to end. But it is still unclear when elections will be held to elect a successor. He said the date of the elections will depend on the planned national dialogue that is set to begin on Monday, and which includes civil society groups, political parties, and candidates. 
On 2nd April 2024, my mission as the head of Senegal comes to an end. I would like this debate to be clearly settled, he said during a televised interview. His announcement assuaged fear that he was planning to extend his term amid a political crisis. Mr. Stoll had been under pressure to announce an election date since attempting to delay it earlier this month. He had wanted to postpone the elections to December so that disputes over the eligibility of other candidates could be resolved. But the country's top court said the delay was unconstitutional and called for the election to be held as soon as possible. And on Thursday, Mr. Saul said he didn't think elections could be held before he steps down. It is unclear who would be leading the country after Mr. Saul's mandate expires and before the elections are completed. Mr. Saul said he was certain there would not be a void. He said he would consider freeing his rivals, including opposition Figo, whose detention to the nationwide protest last year. Moving on to Ivory Coast, Ivory Coast President Alazine Utara has pardoned 51 prisoners who have been jailed for committing violence and crimes against state security during the country's 2010 post-electoral crisis. The West African country was plunged into violence after incumbent President Lawrence Gbagbo refused to, to cede power to Mr. Outara, whom the electoral body had declared the winner of a disputed runoff poll. During the crisis the last, that lasted from November 2010 to April 2011, more than 3,000 people were killed and over 150 women sexually abused, a report by Human Rights Watch said. The pardoned offenders include General Brunet Dumbo, who was a top military official under Mr. Babo. He said the elite Republican Guard, which was accused of committing several of the killings. The gesture of pardoning the offenders is part of President Otara's commitment to work resolutely to consolidate peace. The AFP News Agency reported, citing an official statement. And in Alabama, United States, the court ruling that frozen embryos created through fertility treatment are children has delivered an election year opportunity for Democrats and a political headache for Republicans. U.S. President Joe Biden's party is already campaigning on the controversy casting November's vote as a flight over reproductive right. For Republicans, the role could pose an obstacle in their carefully laid plans to win back to win back subsurban women and swing others. At least three fertility clinics in Alabama have posed in virtual fertilization, that is IVF, since last week's ruling. The all Republican justices decided that frozen embryos created through IVF are considered children under state law. While the ruling does not ban or restrict IVF, Several medical providers in the state cited fears of legal repercussions as the post fertility services in recent days. On Thursday, President Biden sought to blame the ruling on his predecessor and likely Republican challenger in this year's election, Donald Trump. Mr. Biden said in a post on X, formerly Twitter, that the Alabama decision was only possible because of the 2022 ruling by the U.S. Supreme Court, which has three Trump appointees to nullify abortion rights. And that will be all today on Political Update. Thank you for watching. Do join us another time. My name is Lara Emanuel.